asking where does a pet, where does a absolute value fall within that whole pet does thing. Uh, some teachers get in a big tizzy about this. I I think I've made it clear I don't love memorization tricks, right? And that's that's what PEMDAS is really. But uh, some teachers would say, no, let's get rid of PEMDAS. Let's not call it parentheses because some people say PEMDAS, uh, the parentheses. Some people say BEMDAS for brackets, right? And uh, so a lot of teachers want to generalize that and say, let's put like G. And G stands for grouping symbols. Okay, so now grouping symbols could mean parentheses, it could mean brackets, it could mean curly brackets, it could mean absolute value signs, it could even mean the square root of something, it could mean um, Concentrate on it for a second, and then move on to something else. So absolute value would fall into the parentheses category. Okay. So you can kind of think of it as a superpower parentheses. They don't really group things, but they actually do something as well. They take the absolute value. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Um, let's get a line in one here and. So, uh, g of x equals 3 times the absolute value of x. We do that, we multiply it by stuff? Yeah. So, what did that do, multiplying it by 3? It just uh, would move it. Well, I mean, what does it look like in comparison to the normal absolute value graph you multiplied everything by 3? It would be steeper. Steeper, okay. So it isn't, yeah, I guess you could think of it as it's moving it up, but it's not really moving it up. It's not shifting it up. It's not taking it and moving it up, right? It's making it steeper. Cadence, what do you have? Um, it, well, the slope, the slope increases. Slope increases, making steeper. Josie, you have the yeah, slope that's arguments what I was as well. Say is that the slope is three times as much as before. That's pretty concise. This, the slope is three times as uh, as steep as before. Okay. So comparing all three. Well, we are comparing the x value. Comparing these two. Absolute value of negative two, negative one, zero. An absolute value of negative 2 is 2, then 1, we know how this goes. Okay, then we take the absolute value of x, so there it is, multiply it by 3, so this becomes 6, this becomes 3, this becomes still 0. So we notice, like, the vertex, for one thing, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays exactly where the vertex normally would be, but all these other points are going up 3 times as much. Right? Which, if I, like, made your feet stay on the ground, but I made the rest of you, like, twice as high as all of it used to be, You'd just be like twice as tall now. You'd be all stretched out. That's what happens to this graph. It gets stretched out by a factor of three, making it steeper, making the slope three times as much. So we get a zero, zero, a one, three instead of a one, one, a two, six instead of a two, two. That's not six at all. Negative two, six, negative one. And just as a quick, brief, groovy question, h of x, if I had negative 3, the absolute value of x, how would that make that graph look? It would just be going down, it would be negative, it would be instead of positive. So it would be negative instead of positive? So the v would be going. Which v? The this v? Yeah, the points would be going down instead of. So uh, this very v. Just not flip it. Just flip exactly this graph upside down. Yeah. Yeah. So this graph would be upside down. We have negative 3 
as the absolute value of x. Which means that if we compared it to the absolute value of x, just regular old absolute value of x, it would be upside down and it would be steeper. Right? This graph's already steeper, and it's upside down. That's exactly what it's going to look like. Okay. And just before I give you a homework review, let's just throw a bunch of stuff all together in one graph, see if we can use all these translations and transformations and throw it all together. Okay? So what if we had f of x equals uh, negative 4 times the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 6. So let's work in the order of operations and see where this graph's going to go. It's, it's going to stretch, it's going to be upside down, up, down, left, right, all that stuff. So we start on the inside, plus 2. So when we have plus 2 inside the absolute value, what's that do to the graph? Um, to the left too. So let's just do that. Let's let's throw down our our axes here. I'm gonna just kind of make a mental note of it moves to the left two. I'm not gonna start drawing anything because I know it's gonna do some other stuff too. Okay. Well, it moves to the left two. All right. That's the parentheses part. Then we multiply. Multiply by a negative four. So that's kind of two things. When we multiply by a negative, what does that do to the graph? Down. Upside down. So I'm taking a V that goes down instead of up. What about multiplying by a 4? What's that done to the absolute value graph? It's straight up, but it's steeper. So it doesn't move it up or down. Like it's, the vertex stays, but it makes it it's four steep. times as steep. Okay, so at this point, I'm kind of imagining in my head, all right, there's a vertex there. It's stretched out. Instead of going kind of off of like a 45, it goes over 1 and down 4. So it goes to the right and down 4. Right, it's four times as steep. Okay, so I'm imagining that. Let's maybe put another point, another four, another one. It goes down four and to the left one. So imagining this thing is upside down and steeper. It's gone to the left two. Last thing's last. Minus six. What does that do to our graph? Let me subtract six. Okay. It brings it down six points. It brings it down six. So this would come down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This one comes down six as well. These guys would come down six, but I don't have enough room for them. So this is the old graph. It's moved down uh, to the left two. It's been flipped upside down. It's been stretched by a factor of four. It's moved down six. Okay. And oh, that was a part of the old graph too. And now we just get a Now, let's just double check. I'm going to double check and make sure that when I plug in, say, negative 2, I get negative 6. Negative 3 should give me negative 10. Negative 1 should also give me negative 10, just to confirm and to remind myself that like, all these points are based on this function, what the input is, what the output is. Uh, so I think negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, good points to test that I did this thing right. Uh, negative 1, so we're kind of running low on room there. Okay, so negative 1, we got negative 4 times absolute value of negative 1 plus 2 minus 6. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1 times negative 4. Negative 4. And negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10. Negative 1, negative 10. Negative 2. Negative 4 times the absolute value of negative 2 plus 2 minus 6. That one's easy because negative 2 plus 2 is 0 times, doesn't even matter, 0 minus 6, 0 minus 6 negative 6. And I can already see the writing on the wall here, because I'm going to put a negative 3, like in this position. Yes. And negative 3 plus 2 is going to be negative 1, just like this one was positive 1. The absolute value is going to be the same. The absolute value of 1 is 1, times negative 4 is negative 4. Minus 6 is negative 10. So check the points that we just found by just moving it straight.
stretching it, flipping it over, and all that kind of stuff. And we're right about that. And that's pretty much everything I could throw at it, right? Those are all the changes that I could make from what we've had experience with. Uh, we ready for the review? Mm -hmm. If so, okay, let's get out a piece of paper and All right, so real quick, let's, let's like express what we expect to see when we graph this. Just real quick. Because we're multiplied by a negative, we expect the graph to look like what? Like? It's going to be steep and negative. Okay, steep and upside down. So the 3 is going to make it steep, the negative is going to make it upside down. Okay, so 3 times as steep, upside down. Well, it didn't shift left or right or up or down, so it should just start right here. It should be three times as steep, but it should go downward. Normally the steepness would be like to the right one, down one, to the right one, down one. This should be now three times steeper, so to the right one, down three, to the right one, down three. On the other side, same thing. We can just mirror those points. Okay. This is what we expect to see. And we'll confirm so with some quick calculations in a second. We should get these guys right here. Let's test these three points right there just to make sure. An x of negative 1, 0, and 1. Negative 3 times the absolute value of x. So negative 3 times the absolute value of negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and negative 3 is negative 3. Confirmed. 0. Negative 3 times the absolute value of 0. Anything times 0 is 0. Negative 3 times the absolute value of 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. So Definitely see how I would wind up with two six and negative two, or so two negative six and negative two negative six. And so our instincts about it were correct. Upside down three times. Two. Next. All right, let's talk about what we think this graph is going to look like. Cadence. Well. So it goes up and not down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be to the right three. Right three. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about that two? Two times. It, the slope is going to be two over one. Two over one. Good. So, well, when we say that, the slope, let's just be 100% uh, honest about it. It has two slopes, right? Two slopes? So like a positive and a negative version of the same slope. On the right, we got the positive version, and on the left, we have the negative version. So it'll have a slope of 2 over 1 or negative 2 over 1, right, whether we're on the right or the left. So it should move to the right 3, all right? And it should be twice as steep. So it should have this uh, slope going up to and over 1. And if we connect all that, we'll just confirm in just a second that X, we're thinking 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, 4. And G of X. G of X. So 2 times absolute value of 2 minus 3. 2 times the absolute value of a 3 minus 3. 2 times the absolute value of 4 minus 3. Okay. So here we get 2 times the absolute value of negative 1. Here we get 2 times the absolute value of positive 1. We get 2 times the absolute value of 0. And 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1, again, is 2. And 2 times 0 is 0. So 2, 2, 2, two 3, 0, and 4, 2. And we're right about that. We can see how it would go over another 1 and up another 2. All right. In your notes, I'd like you to make a couple of tables. They're going to relate to this rectangle here. As you make those, let's talk about what these probably represent. What does this, well, what do you think the P stands for? Uh, 
So given the dimensions of this rectangle, go ahead and fill in the first part of this table. It would look like, well, this side is 2, and this side is 2. Okay. We know the side is 4 as well, so take that into account. So now we're going to mess around with it a little bit. I'm going to take this guy. One, two, there. We finally got it. And then we lost it. We're going to duplicate it. All right, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to stretch it out and make a new rectangle. Okay. How much bigger do you think I was trying for there? Oh, about two times. Yeah, so I kind of mess around until that guy's right there. Then, yes, yeah, twice as big now. Which means that what is S for this guy? Twice as big. I got two, right? And so this side length would be four. I know that my S's were notoriously like five. Trying really hard to work on that. 33 is nice. For anybody who's not sure if this is square, or sorry, rectangle is twice as big, how long is this side? So this side length is four and this is eight. What do you have, perimeter or area? Um, I have both. Okay. And the perimeter is 24 and the area is 16. 24 and 16. Mm -hmm. Remember this is eight and this is four. times uh, 24 is the area. Let's think about that one again. This is 8, and this is 4. 32. Oh, 32 is the area. How about that perimeter?
mistakes, which means this I like this how much? One more, but I won't. I won't show you the rectangle. Let's say the side length is eight. The side length is eight. Can you tell me what the perimeter and the area are? Yeah. So let's take this data, these four points each, okay? And make two different graphs. One graph where this is our x and this is our y, and another where this is our x and this is our y. Draw a couple of graphs. Take a couple of minutes to do that. All right. So how would you describe this graph and this graph? What's different between these two graphs? Wow, the area is steeper. Steeper? Okay, it's pretty steep here. And it gets even steeper, and then even steeper from there, and then even steeper from there. Right? It just keeps getting steeper. Get it? So that means that this The slope is constantly changing, which is, means it's not constant, right? It's just always something constant about it that it's always changing. Right? How about the slope of this guy right here? The same. And when, the, sl when the, the slope is constant, the rate of change is constant, what kind of a function do we have? A linear. A linear function. And when the, the slope or the rate of change is not constant, not linear. We don't have really a, I mean, there's so many functions that are not linear. This guy here is, happens to be a quadratic function, a squared function, which makes sense because area is a square dimension, right? Square, which is squared. Okay. Uh, so really, we're just comparing linear and nonlinear functions. Have you done that before? Uh-huh. Decided if something was linear or not linear? Yeah. Okay. So... I'm just going to put a nail in the coffin there of uh, being able to tell whether something's linear or not linear. When something's linear, we can do something that's pretty easy like, can you predict, just from this graph, without having to do really a lot of cal calculations, uh, if this side length were now 10, just two more than the previous, which is two more, two more, two more, two more, can you tell me what the area would be? You just add 12 to it, so it'd be 60. 60. Okay. That makes sense because when I add two on here, I get 
I add on two here, I add on four on there, four on there, and two on the other side. This is what I'm talking about, this rectangle. When I add on two here, right? That on two onto this side, two onto this side. Well, that means I gotta add on four to this side, four to this side, right? A total of 12. 12 every time around the perimeter. The area, that's a different story. 